Hi guys, it's Cyrus of Chaos. I'm here with Max Hartung and Matias Sabo. And today we're going to be asking them a couple questions that you guys asked me to ask them on Instagram. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves, tell us about how you started fencing and why you chose Sabre. And uh, Matias, you're on the left, so do you want to start first? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, as you said, my name is Matias Sabo. I'm uh, 28 year old, uh, years old and I'm a German saber fencer. And, um, well, I started fencing, I can't remember when I started fencing because um, <laughs> my parents were both fencers uh, on a very high level. My mother uh, got, uh, I think, silver, a silver medal um, with the team in um, Atlanta and a bronze medal in, in Barcelona. So she was quite successful. And um, so I was kind of raised in uh, in um, yeah the, the the fencing hall and I, I can't remember when I actually started fencing I I used to play uh, soccer and uh, tennis but I at a certain point I decided to to choose fencing and uh, we had no other choice uh, than saber well my mother uh, taught um, taught foil. But um, yeah, I, I I started with well, well, we actually we uh, some fencers started with foil um, for the the feeling of the the hand technique, but then they quickly uh, changed to to saber. That's yeah. it. I know a lot of countries do that. Like all the Italians, all the top French fencers started fencing foil. And you you yeah. to, you you represent Germany now, but you used to represent Romania, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I I changed the nationality when I was uh, 18. Um, until my second junior year, I fenced for uh, Romania because um, I was uh, born in, in Romania, but I don't speak Romanian. I'm I'm well, my my mother language is um, is Hungarian because uh, uh, my family is Hungarian. So as like you you might hear it in my name and. Um, so because I, I was born in, in Romania, I, I fenced for them. But then I realized uh, my options are, are better here in uh, Germany. And yeah, kind of my, my whole life is in, is in Germany. And so, but yeah, I'm fine now. So. Yeah, it seems like it was a good decision. Yeah. Next, same yeah. question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I fenced... Uh, together with Matias for, for a long time now. And I think the actual reason he needed to change nationality was on the Junior World Cups and World Championships. He was always in another hotel, which made uh, the party after very hard. <laughs> so he had no choice in that. Um, and I started, um, I remember it a bit more detailed because um, my parents didn't used to fence. Nobody in my family was uh, doing sports on a, on a high level. So there was no plan or anything at all. But I was uh, just a regular kid in elementary school and uh, Matthias' dad came by and he offered uh, like a beginner's class at the elementary school and, and told me I should come to this fencing club in Dormagen, the city where I actually uh, grew up. So it was all uh, pretty coincidental. And so, so he took me there and he put a saber in my hand when I was eight, year, uh, eight years old and told me, okay, you need to come three times per week. I was like, uh huh. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> then and now we need to come five times and six times and uh, competitions on the weekend. And well, um, after a short time, I spent so much time there. I had no other friends, uh, <laughs> other than the same guys I still hang out with. So um, so it, was, it came really natural to me. Like going to school in the afternoons, I was in the fencing hall. On the weekends, I was at competitions. I didn't really uh, I didn't really reflect on it when I was. Uh, when I was uh, young. Well, and this is all 22 years ago now. Uh, I got a, a silver pin from TSV Bayer Dormagen for my uh, faithful 25 years membership. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so there's some some grandpas uh, getting, you know, this uh, some kind of medal of honor of the of the club <laughs> and also me because I was hanging out there for such a long time. Yeah. And and it's still fun, and uh, we tried to qualify uh, together with Peter, Ritchie, and Björn with the German team for the Tokyo Olympics, uh, and we did. And now it's postponed. 
that's kind of where we are now. Yeah, totally. So s- speaking about that, are you guys at all worried that you're not going to be in the same fencing shape you're in right now in one year? Uh, talking about the the shape is uh, is a is very good because we actually were in a very bad shape because everyone was injured, and um, I was uh, I was thinking about uh, this question and I had or I have the feeling it uh, it is actually very good that uh, the games were postponed for us because uh, it wasn't sure that uh, Peter would become uh, healthy and and uh, it wasn't sure that uh, his level. Uh, would be high enough for the Olympics, and um, so one year off is actually very good for us. So I, I I think so. And now we have time to to work on stuff we haven't had time during the the season, and um, so I, I think it for us it, it's it's very good. Well, so it's it's so and so actually. I was I, w- I had a good season uh, last year and I felt already getting uh, back to shape a bit. But at the same time, I had uh, some problems with my knee. I actually, just got an uh, X-ray of it uh, yesterday, and it's a bit inflammated. You know, it's it's just uh, yeah, too many launches, too many uh, too much training. So so now I have some time to recover. So it's all very mixed feelings. You know you. You, you can't foretell how we would have done on the one day that are the Olympic Games mm-hmm. uh, in, in July. Now it's a year later. It has some advantages, especially, of course, for Peter, who has a very severe injury with his uh, torn patella tendon. That's what um, happened to me, the... too. Hmm? That's what happened to me, too. Yeah, you, you had that. Oh, I'm interested how you recovered. Uh, he is <laughs> apparently doing fine uh, on his recovery plan, but yeah. So with him being one of our strongest, uh, maybe the strongest team fans uh, in the last year, um, the chances uh, might even improve by by having some more time. Interesting. The 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 thing is, uh, I think physically it won't be a problem. Um, it will be more difficult uh, difficult uh, mentally to um, maintain uh, a high high level of motivation because it kind of the, the season kind of didn't end properly yeah. so um, and it will continue in 2021 um, actually uh, we, we hope it will continue and um, so it, it will be it will be a tough to, to I, I think mentally, it will be more more tough uh, than physically, actually. Yeah, because because so much of this is about timing, right? Like you're 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 trying to peak at a certain point in the season, and then when it, when you're supposed to start competing, like everything just stops. So now it's about like, you know, starting again and and building up and peaking at the right time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Talk talking about what, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. This is what we usually do. We try to kind of uh, to to train until a certain point, and then have have a preparation, and then be be fit at the right moment. But these periods usually are up to a maximum of I don't know three or four months, mm-hmm. where we have a competition that's kind of important. And now we don't know when the first competition is, and the Olympic Games are in one year and four months. So it's it's a a period uh, of a length that I never had in my fencing career. I never had a. Uh, I don't know the the fixed point um, so far in the future. So it's it it feels really weird because I'm I'm doing some stuff, but I don't know when 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 we are really gonna start to to push it and to really go back. Yeah, it's it's a big problem because I mean ev- everyone has this problem too. But there's like be- like you said because there's no target start date, it's really hard to figure out exactly like when to start ramping up. So if we get if we could talk about a normal seasoning a season for a second, how much of your training regimen is conditioning versus actually fencing, and how does that change throughout the course of the season? Either of you. Max. <laughs> okay, so um, so what what we usually do is have some kind of preparation at the begin of uh, beginning of the season where um, most of the um, most of the uh, trainings are actually some kind of athletic. It's, it's very uh, 
basic track and field training, I would say. Uh, so we do weightlifting, we do, we go running, um, do some core exercise, stuff like this. And it's the the major part of training just at the beginning of the year for a couple of weeks. And then we kind of uh, uh, change it until we have um, the major part is fencing specific training. Um, so during the World Cup season, we had uh, three sessions, um, athletics and yoga and um, five or six times fencing per week. And, uh, so, so the, and this, and then during the season, um, between the world cups, the amount of, um, of sessions would be the same, but the intensity of the, of the training would, would, uh, vary. So we would have before competitions, uh, less repetitions, higher weights, uh, higher speed and athletic training, um, and also more competitive fencing training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially uh, the fencing training, the beginning of uh, of the year is so we actually we we would um, start fencing like actual fencing, um, competitive fencing is usually uh, oh, Siri. Okay, um, we would start like three weeks before the actual competition. So we actually. Uh, do a lot of exercises and from what I heard or what my experience is if you compare us to to uh, other countries I saw many countries for example Hungary um, they would just fence like they do some some footwork and then just fence no exercises at all exercises at, at all just um, um, with the with the coaches um, during uh, the lessons but um, I, had, I have the feeling, especially us, we would do more um, uh, exercises um, very close to, to actual fencing. Um, but we try to, to fence uh, more with um, uh, our fences or, or with um, um, other countries because it's more intense than fencing um, at home only with uh, our team. So it's usually um, the fencing is intense. If you if we fence um, in between the team, like with Max and Richie, Peter and and Bjorn, but the the intensity is higher if uh, we uh, practice with, uh, for example, we practice a lot with uh, the French team, uh, or a few years ago we uh, fenced with uh, the Koreans and and the Italians. It it is much tougher and it's actually way better to to. Uh, to practice with other uh, teams. Yeah, it also, it gives you kind of like a chance to see some of the people that you're going to be fencing against and just, you know, kind of maybe figure out a little bit with them. It's also more of a competitive atmosphere, so. Yeah, we 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 thought about this uh, a lot. And when I was younger, especially uh, the time Nico was fencing, it was all about when we have a training camp with uh, the other fencers, everyone, everyone try to hide something but um in nowadays it is impossible to hide something because we have uh, youtube and and you uh, you analyze uh videos and and everyone can see what you're actually doing in competition so there is no reason to hide because you're, you're doing the stuff maybe you can try one or two things but uh, when i was younger everyone didn't actually practice properly or they didn't fence properly in in practice um because they were afraid that that i see stuff i didn't see before and you'd get uh, figured out or now, something sorry and you maybe would get like figured out or something yes and i mean like i fenced with most of the 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 fencers uh, in the regular circuit a hundred times so of course i know what they do mm -hmm. and i saw uh, videos of them so there is no there is no surprise so i had the feeling that the last few years um training with other other um countries was more effective because everyone would like fence more and, upside and less downside yes yes so you so i actually had actually had a uh, i i don't agree completely because i had a hard hard lessons learned uh, when I when I was first in the German national team which is quite a long time ago actually um, 
I think I was still junior, but I was on the senior national team already, and we had a training camp in Italy. And uh, I knew Aldo Montano was Olympic champion, and he was uh, one of the best, of course. And uh, and he fenced with me in the training camp when I was, I don't know, so 17 or so, uh, three times. And I think I, I, I won two of the three matches. I was really excited about it. I was really happy that I could. It was really intense matches. And I was really happy I could uh, compete on this high level. And uh, shortly after was the European Championship, where I also competed for Germany <laughs> and Italy. <laughs> and he kicked my ass so bad um, and he actually I don't think he he remembered as in he, he went down to a notebook and wrote, wrote down what worked but I think he really got a, a feeling for, for what I was doing and I was maybe not fencing uh, so many varieties as I did later in my season no matter how he did it he, he taught me that I need to, to be careful in training and I need to think uh, what to do and what not to. So sometimes in training camps, of course, with the with the best in the world, you kind of I don't know, you dance around each other, you you try to have a good match, but not to show everything. That's at least what I uh, try to do for myself. And then with the strong teams, and that's why it's so much fun with Korea or Italy or France. Uh, there's a number four, five, six, seven, and they're still all very good. And there's some people you don't need to. Uh, yeah, hold back anything, and and you can give everything you have in training, and really exhaust yourself. Mm. Yeah, but but you cannot compare your fencing to, uh, when you were a junior to what you fence today. So you you have more variations of actions, and you are more experienced. So you have you can change, and and yes, I have but the feeling when 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 you're a junior, you have like three actions, and yes. if if they fit, it's cool. But if not. I mean, like I fenced, I fenced uh, with Aldo uh, when I was uh, a junior. Was my first uh, uh, training camp in Italy, and I couldn't touch him. Um, so I, I partly agree. But, well, but still, um, what I mean is, what I mean is, if I fence with another good fencer now in in in, the, in a training camp before a competition or so, and I feel like okay, this one move, it's just going perfectly, and I score four or five touches with it. Then eventually, I'm not gonna uh, repeat it until he figures out how to actually get the parry on the hit well, or something like this. The, the goal in a training camp is not to beat everyone all the time. Like you, you save that for the competition is to get yourself sharp. So, yeah, yeah. I agree with that too. And it, it's funny that you say that about Aldo because uh, I I heard a very similar story about Keith Smart. He was saying that he was just like crushing Aldo in a training camp. And it was a training camp either right before the Olympics or World Championships. And at that Olympics or World Championships, Aldo just crushed him. So, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Uh, Aldo is, well, is from, from what I heard, or what my feeling is, Aldo um, was in his good times. He was uh, a fencer who just fenced with his feelings. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to... Uh, I, or from what I think um, or what, what I saw uh, when I saw him fencing, he was not the, the guy who was thinking too much. He just fenced easily. He was very cool. He just danced around and he did his own stuff, didn't care what uh, the other so uh, thought. And he had a very good feeling. So, Yeah, and there's advantages and disadvantages to doing that. If your feeling is working really well and you get into a good groove, it can be very effective. But if your opponent is trapping you really well and there's not a whole lot of thought behind it, it can be hard to get out of that. So there's, you know, there's again, there's an upside and a downside to it. So talking about that a little more, um, when you're fencing, how much of it is thought-based and how much of it is like feeling or reaction? <laughs> um, I know that's a hard I, question I'm, to answer, but yeah, when when I'm fencing good, when I have a good day, it's just feeling. It's it's um or f what what because I usually uh, I remember especially um before um the Olympics 2016 before the uh, or during the the start of the qualification um. In, in in Moscow especially and the European Championships afterwards um, I couldn't really remember 
after uh, immediately after the um, the bout what I actually did because I, I just fenced I I, I, I felt uh, what I, I I would do and if I think too much it's it's bad so you have to somehow find uh, maybe there are a lot of fencers that uh, use their feelings there are a lot of fencers that uh, are uh, are very clever and they use their minds uh, but um, you have to do I think you have to find a very good mix yeah I, I would totally agree um, I think it's kind of a mix of intuition where you of course you think but you don't overthink stuff mm -hmm. so when I When I uh, had had a good season last year, I, I didn't I didn't do a lot of uh, video analysis as we did a lot of now late later in the Olympic qualification. I I didn't really um, well didn't think too much what my my opponent was going to do, but rather what I want to do and what what I want um, to make my opponent uh, do and react to what I show him. So I was more focusing on myself, and I tend to um, actually. To overthink, to to every time I made like a, a long analysis and kind of a game plan, it's like okay, this guy retreats this many times or whatever, so I should hit him where he doesn't parry stuff like this. It always after after I don't know uh, uh, latest uh, to the break, I was like, fuck, he's not doing what I, what you know, I I wrote down he's gonna do this now he's doing something else and plan didn't work, so I should I don't I should improvise and. Well, that's kind of my my takeaway. To of course, you need to think, especially I think in training, what to do, how to improve yourself. So I, I know in a way I think very much about myself and, and and about what what my strengths and weaknesses are. But in competition, um, when the referee says "Ali," there's not much time, and uh, I try rather to be in the moment than in my lists and notes and and thoughts. I like what you said before about getting the other person to react to you because so much of it in saber fencing, like once, once the action starts, there's no time for thinking. Like if, you, if you're thinking about your steps or anything, like you're probably already going to get hit at that point. So it, it's, it's about like, it's about figuring out what you want to, how you want to start the action before it starts. And then for me, at least once, once that situation was over, the rest of it was all feeling. And then you think between touches what went wrong and how you can change things. But once the touch starts, there isn't there isn't a whole lot of conscious thought. And I think that's intentional because there just isn't time. Yeah, and you you should not uh, forget that uh, there is uh, on the other side uh, there is a, another human being <laughs> that is thinking the same things, and and he would prepare f uh, to fence you as well. So. Of course, there's um, there's a fine line to to overthink uh, stuff and to do uh, or n not to do enough. So it's you have to be right in the middle, I think. Yeah. Again, I I was never at the level that either of you guys were at, but when I fence someone that I fenced a couple times before, e each time I like I have a few ideas of what they might do, but I just reevaluate every time because maybe they learned from the last time that we fenced. Maybe they have started doing something completely different in their lessons. Like you have, you have no idea. You can treat it as yeah. like similar, but it has to be evaluated differently. Still, yeah. I think it's it's kind of about um, recognition of patterns. Mm -hmm. So if you if you recognize the other one um, every time he attacks, he's doing this kind of preparation, or uh, if he retreats, his feint doesn't come at the right time, and and there's kind of in between something you feel and some something you you really actively notice, mm -hmm. and it's like okay, there's something there's something wrong, there's a mistake, or there's some something I can then react to, and so it's kind of well, just just about subconscious to uh, to actually figuring out okay, he hit me on the head the fourth time, maybe now I should at least this is the point where the where the coach comes from the side when he also figured out. <laughs> This doesn't look good. This happened four times now. Do something. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so another thing I wanted to talk to you about, guys about about competition specifically was um, competition anxiety. Like it, it's present for everyone no matter what. 
And so how do you guys deal with that before a tournament and during a tournament? <laughs> um, I, I still have to figure it out. So I'm, I'm 20 years old and I'm, I'm still nervous. And I'm, the only thing my mom taught me um, when, when I was young and the only thing she says every time is doesn't matter which competition, it doesn't matter if it's Olympics, if, if it's words or Europeans, uh, everyone is nervous and uh, you're in the same situation. And uh, uh, usually, usually when, when the first bout starts, everything is gone. Um, and I have no actual game plan or to, to solve, to solve this. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to be in a very good mood, but, um, like listening to, to fun music or, or, or good music, but there is no like food I would, uh, eat every morning or, or in, in, before the competition, um, that's the same, but I, I didn't found, uh, the right uh, solution for this, this problem. Yeah. Well, I think, I think being, um, a bit tense and nervous can also be a good thing. Um, so, so me as a person, I'm sometimes, uh, too calm to you know until i get to get in the right mood um to get uh, on fire so to say mm -hmm. um, but one thing when i got nervous that always helped me was the same you guys uh, just said is that everybody's nervous so when i was in the call room um looking at the other people i was looking for for signs uh you know just um shakes or or, or seeing how, <laughs> how the how the other people would be nervous and uh and to to um to turn the picture around, not thinking about how, how hard is, uh, how hard it is to beat all of them, but for the next one that he might actually be nervous, um, because it might be hard to beat me. Yeah. You know, to, to kind of get in the other shoes. And also, um, when you enter the fencing hall in the morning, there's 200 people and you see, I don't know, 50 people who are excellent fencers. And, uh, and that's also a bit scary because everybody can do it everybody's good and uh not everybody but um, a lot of people are but then i try to focus always just on the next opponent mm -hmm. because i don't need to beat all the 50 fencers that are good and that just might one. scare me yeah but it's always just one and if it's a really good day it's just six mm -hmm. yeah totally so so i'm not i'm not gonna fence all 50 of them even even if i if i do my best and um and uh, when I was younger, I always looked at the other bouts and, and, and looking very far in my tableau, who is going to be uh, the next or the next after. Um, and there was, I don't know, five or six strong uh, fencers in my quarter. And, and that made me nervous, too. So now I just I just look at the next or maybe maybe run one round later, but not at the whole tournament. I don't look who, I, who I'm going to fence in the final because, you know, it's a, it's a job for later. So I'm, I'm trying to really be in the um in the job that's just just ahead and what what do i need to do until my my next match okay, i need to warm up i need as much as i said be in a good mood we play uh we try to find a like a safe space where not too many people are where we have some space we play music we we joke a lot actually on the competitions we try not to i don't try to isolate myself that's also something i try it's like you know the big headphones are all, uh, on angry uh angry rock music to you know to be really Wow, to be really ready, but um, no, I try. I, I I'd rather be with the others and um, f still focused, but but you know, not too much, um, not to push it. But you know, if you have to wait two hours, I think it doesn't help to to be quiet for two hours and be just like sitting in your chair and mm -hmm. be like, ah, okay, well, it should start now because I'm ready. It's like, yeah, that that can be kind of worse too because you you can get into your own head too much. Um, I, I like what you said about not looking too far ahead in the tableau. I actually learned that lesson very early when I was at a local competition and I looked at the tableau and saw that there was a guy in my next round who I always had trouble with. And I was so scared about fencing him. I was thinking about it too much and I lost the bout before. And then I realized, 
I looked at the tableau wrong and I wasn't even going to fence that guy. So <laughs> it happened, happened, happened to me, happened to me exactly. Um, at a, at a junior world championships, I think in, in Belek where, um, Aaron Silagi was in my, in my quarter and, uh, and he lost, I think to, um, to O'Connor, but then they changed. So I watched the match and it was going to be my next match. And, uh, and he lost, and then the video referee changed the um, the last touch, so he didn't lose. And then he was back in the tableau. Uh, I was like, "Fuck! I, I'm gonna need to fence him." And and right after this, my my match started, and I was fencing some Korean I never heard of, <laughs> and I, I didn't get to the round I was worried about. Yeah. And uh, and that's why I stopped to focus too much on you know on future problems. Yeah, totally. And I I think just like comparing what you guys both said and how it's a little bit different. Everyone's ideal competition mentality and like physical state is different. So something that works for you might not necessarily work for other people, but if you're struggling to figure it out, try out different things that people are doing. And like, sometimes I have conversations like this where someone, someone is talking about how like being social distracts them and makes it harder for them to fence. So I tell those people, like, put on big headphones, play games on your phone, don't talk to anybody. But some people who think way too much about fencing, you want to do the opposite of that. Talk to everyone, do things to distract yourself from thinking about fencing. So it's, it's very, it's very personal. And just kind of think about what the problem is and how you can kind of get around it. And another, another really important thing I think to take away from this is that people don't realize that everyone has anxiety. Everyone is, is nervous. You, you two are two of the top fencers in the world right now. And you just both said that it happens to you. So I think, I think it's important to realize that being nervous is a normal thing and it's just about how you deal with it. Not, not about it happening or not. So that's, that's my, that's my take on that anyway. Um, so to change gears a little bit, what is the single biggest thing that you worked on that has had the biggest impact on your game? Is, has there been something like that for you guys? Um, Max, do you want to start? <laughs> yeah. So for me, so for me, I really had something that felt like a a, mo- a, a game changing moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it wasn't about one move. It was more about my my mentality towards training. Um, and that happened um, actually in 2012 after the London Olympic Games, where I moved to study um, to a university that was uh, far away from from our club, far mm-hmm. away from uh, from my coach, uh, because I felt like I needed to get out to um, to not you know just focus on fencing, but to also have a plan for my uh, for future, life of after. Yeah. So so and this brought me in a place where I almost. <clears throat> But one could say I quit fencing. Like it was really, it, it was not going to work out. It was, uh, it was too hard uh, with the distance between the training center and my university. It was really close to impossible to, to still fence successfully. And uh, but after a while, I figured out I was, I was missing it a lot. And I, I could still, I still had fun in fencing. Mm-hmm. So I really made a plan for myself to keep fit uh, during my times of study, but also um, when I have some time between exams or anything, to I drove to Dormagen to our training uh, center, and I tried really conscious consciously to um, to use the time to really make the best of the time um, because I went there voluntarily. And before, as I said, I was I was always in the fencing hall. I always did what. Uh, really sad and um, and uh, I was lucky I had a uh, he's a great coach so so I came really far with this but it, it was always like okay I need to go there every day and later after I graduated from high school so was uh, in the army and the sports program so Vili was also my boss and I went there and kind of had a, a pretty passive way of you know just going there and doing what I was told um, and that worked fine for for the moment, but when I when I decided, okay, I, I take the time now from from studying and I go to the fencing hall and I want to make the best of it, I 
I took more time on reflecting what's actually good for me, what works for me, what what maybe where also um, I am different from the other fencers. Um, yeah, and and this was kind of a, a changing moment in my fencing career to be more conscious and more reflective in training. Wow. Uh, I, I think um, it's it's very similar what... Um, oh, Max is gone? Or is I'm he still there? there? You, you oh, pause okay, for a second, I but it's, it's fine now. Oh, okay. Um... It is very similar to 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 what Max said because um, there is no action uh, on this level you are not able to do. Like you're if you if you're on this level, you have to be good uh, in in attacks or uh, uh, defending or the the game in the box and stuff like this. So. Um, it must be mentality uh, and uh, psychology, uh, psychology uh, that you can change. And my moment was actually um, at the at the beginning of the the qualification uh, for for Rio. Um, I took it very serious. Um, I, I I lost weight. I I uh, focused. Um, I focused uh, on on my food. I, I tried to do. I tried to be more uh, um, athletic. I, I tried to do more than the others. More more um, video analysis. I, I tried to do much more than the others. Um, and I prepared very well for the first competition of the qualification. And I lost the first day. And I was really pissed. And and two weeks later, uh, we went to uh, the Grand Prix in in Moscow, and uh, I got second. And and then I realized the 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 two weeks before, I didn't care uh, about anything. I didn't care about food. I didn't care about uh, 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 athletics. I I just went to practice and I had fun. So I, I, I enjoyed the time and there are two sides. So I, I don't want to say um, just go to, to training and, and don't care about what you're doing or, right. or you should care about uh, what you eat if you, if you want to become a high level fencer, but try to, to to be more calm, try to be more cool, try to not overthink uh, stuff. And that's actually what helped me to, to become a, uh, or to, to get on a higher level than before. So actually this is the only thing I changed. I think a lot of us have had moments like that where you are just focused so much on it and you want it so bad that you kind of forget that the point is to like enjoy yourself. Like there was there was a period when I was going to practice where every time I'd lose an action, I'd get really upset with myself. And I, I always left practice feeling like very negative. And at a certain point, I realized that that wasn't sustainable. And it wasn't it wasn't helpful for improvement. Because if you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're not going to be as motivated. You're not going to want to go as much. And so I, I also had a similar moment to that where you just have to remember like, you started the sport because you love it. And at a, like, at a deep level, like sports are there for your enjoyment. So, I mean, that, that kind of mentality change helped me out at a certain point too. So, yeah. Um, There's, um, before you, I, I know you want to go to the next question, but one other thing that really changed a lot is after high school, um, we started, uh, really professionally, um, having, uh, athletic training so next to the fencing training that's very specific um, where as much as said I could do all the parries I could do all the cuts uh, it's like I, I was educated good as a fencer but um, when I watch old videos of me as a junior where when I didn't do this I didn't have the stability the, the, the power the strength so um, and this was only possible after I graduated from high school where we started this with uh, 
um, with another coach who was actually from track and field too. And this also helped a lot um, in, in uh, fencing better, but also I had less, way less injury, injuries. So mm. in, in high school time, I twisted my ankle every couple of months. I had some, uh, some tendons strained. Um, I thought this would just belong to, to fencing and, and it's normal and everybody has it. But it completely stopped after I did a proper athletic training. So this was also something that was really important. That's interesting. I know that um, the, the Koreans also have a very low injury rate. And I was told that uh, Gu, for example, his, his coach since he was a little kid has a PhD in biomechanics. So just like every, everything that the coach is teaching him is not just about being a good fencer, but about, about doing fencing in a way that is very sustainable for your body. And you can really see it in the way that he fences. It's... <laughs> That's funny because it doesn't look like uh, it's sustainable. Oh yeah. I mean like when when he fences it's like everything is is so soft. He like never like twists himself hard or like sh- like has a jarring motion. Everything is so like smooth and like well placed even though he's like stretching very much. But all that stuff is is like addressed in his training. So it's just it's 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 interesting. It's it's a different style cuz I For mean sure. if if we would fence if if we would fence like them we would be injured immediately. Like, we, we would die after the first two bouts. Because cause these guys are, um, they are way lighter than, than we are. They are, I think, Gu is the same height and 10, 10 kilogram lighter than me. Um, we, we... Or 15. Huh? Or 15. <laughs> I, I think... I think he's he's uh, seventy three kilogram, and now I I lost weight. So, <laughs> but um, it's it's yeah it, it and also it, what's interesting it it doesn't look like um, fencing from the books, like the, especially uh, the the lessons uh, I saw um, is is different to, to what we Europeans do. Uh, also, um, also the, the lunges and, and other stuff is different to what we do and what we learned. So it's, it's, it would be very interesting to, to have conversation with them, but it's right now it's very difficult because my Korean is very bad. <laughs> yeah, mine too. It's, it's interesting because uh, that, that same coach who used to coach Gu has now moved to the U.S. and has a coach uh, club in Texas, and his yeah, kids, yeah, yeah. his kids are starting to do really well at our tournaments. And it, it's funny seeing Americans fencing like Koreans and doing well. So it it's just interesting. So we we talked about how different their style is to to your style. What what is it about the German style that is unique? Whether it's training or like the physicality of it or the actual fencing. Um. We, we're thinking about this uh, like for a while because from what we what we see like the the other systems from Korea uh, Russia France Italy um, they have like very good sports systems and they have their facilities they have their physiotherapists they have everything there and they have a very good system it's still we, we're still in top four and we are still able to beat them. Um, not every time, but sometimes. Yeah, you're always competitive. And yes, and and we don't have the the same infrastructure. We don't. Okay, well, right now it, it got better, but if you compare the facil- facilities, for example, it's completely different. Um, but we have uh, right now an excellent coach, or still for a long time. And um, the I think the mentality is different. Um, as Max said um, when he was talking about his time uh, during studying, when we have practice, we have practice for two hour, hours, we go there and we use this time we have um, and to, to get the maximum out of it. We don't waste too much time. Like we... We um, were in a training camp uh, with the Russians, 
and they would start like one hour before and they would uh, like one hour before the, the actual practice would start then two hours practice and then cool down half hour so you have uh, another one and a half hours where you do i don't know you were just hanging around and do stuff um so i have the feeling we right now we we are using our time better than others and this is i think the main point we grew up together like all the fencers that are right now in the the first team we grew up together uh, i i know max since i'm i don't know 10 maybe younger um I, I I fenced with Peter, uh, with Richie when we were young. We are from the same club. Um, Richie is, is from Zoling. It's it's like half an hour from from Dormagen, and he moved uh, to Dormagen when he was 16. But um, every good fencer from from Germany, like um, in the last few years, beside of uh, of Bjorn, came from Dormagen. They and. The, we, everyone was living in in Dormagen and uh, grew up in Dormagen, so we are um, are a family. And my when in interviews, my my dad is talking about us. He is talking about uh, not his students. He's talking about his kind of sons. So um, it's I think this is the main difference between us and the other fencers. Hmm. Do you agree with all that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's special. I mean, uh, people oftentimes fans uh, many years together on the same team, but growing up like this, um, uh, I think when I was starting, when I was eight, much as must have been six, so uh, we know each other that long. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's, it's special also, we know each other that long, and uh, we're still getting along good. <laughs> And uh, and we spend our our time together even when there's no no fencing around. We're friends. I think that's a big big advantage. Um, another thing we do, I think it's which is very very important, is uh, we play a lot of football tennis lately. <laughs> so so the so the injury rate first of all in basketball was too high. Nobody could play basketball. Play football, still too many injuries. <laughs> Uh, so we we changed our uh, game. We do when you know when we should have a session where we don't uh, have too hard of a training. Um, we to put two benches in the middle of the volleyball court, and we play two and two, three touches. You get the ball up, and you need to return it volley. And this and this game uh, we played it a lot, and we actually got quite good at it. <laughs> and uh, I think. It's the secret ingredients that is really, really important. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So the last question that I've got for you guys is um, what advice would you give to someone who is trying to get to a senior World Cup level but is, is struggling to make the transition there? Um, yes, if you want to start, you can start. So I think I think a lot is about um, getting the right knowledge of fencing. So in a way, fencing is not that professional. Um, I wouldn't say uh, anybody can make it, um, but it's not, you know, um, I was uh, from Dormagen um, and was junior world champion and Matjas was and Nico was, so the talent pool were actually I don't know uh, a couple of kids so there were not too many so you don't need to have um, I don't know you don't need to be two meters tall you don't need to be fast like Usain Bolt so it's more about um, about what you learn and and because it's so much about knowledge you should try um, and and reflect and try to get the best sources of coaching and information you can get um, well, and, and a lot of it is actually, I mean, you still need people to show you and to talk to you, but also a lot of it is available online now better than, than before. And I think a lot of it, a lot of what fencing, fencing coaches teach still is pretty uh, dogmatic, you know, is about a way 
they used to fence, what they think is the right kind of fencing. And you oftentimes hear this as an explanation. Why do you do the cut like this? Why do you do the parry here? It's like, it's because this is how it's done. It's what I learned when I was a kid. And this is the true, you know, the true spirit of Sabre. And so I would say the most important thing is to really figure figure it out um, what what is efficient, what is, you know, um, the right the right thing to do, but more in a in a physical term, not in a dogmatic spiritual way. What's the shortest way for your cut? What's the best place for the parry to cover the most uh, the most of your body um, and still be able to repost? Mm, I, I think I think it's very easy. There there are two things: you have to work and you have to be patient. That's to, for me. The only thing you you have to you have to do, because uh, especially the the transition between junior and and uh, and senior, the, is 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 very difficult. I mean, like there are just a few fencers that were able to um, to change from junior to to senior and be awesome in senior. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Siladi Limbach. Um, Gu was quite good. Uh, there were just a few, a handful of fencers that were immediately good in seniors. And you have to be patient. Like I, it took me two years from junior uh, to, to senior uh, where I, I lost almost every, every uh, bout. Um, I, it was very hard for me to, to get uh, into second day. Um, and if, you, if you're not that high uh level and you're you're thinking about actually qualifying for the world cups it's the same you have to to work hard uh you have to as max said to to get the knowledge you need um and get the maximum out of the 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 practice and be patient like you because stuff is not working um you you should not um like lose uh, lose your motivation and uh and quit um if if you really love uh, the sport continue continue working so i that's the only thing for me that worked <laughs> and I, i'm gonna add one more thing to that i see a lot um people at like a cadet or junior level start doing well and become very arrogant and it, it's it's almost like well my stuff is working here and it, it should be working on a senior level as well but that's that's not always the case so just because the, the, you go ahead yeah sorry sorry I was gonna say just ju continue. just because you've had success at like a young level doesn't mean you know everything like yeah. and and you so just have I, to be open minded when you're when you're learning that stuff and if if you're not then you're not gonna learn that stuff so yeah. it's kind of it's kind of funny though if you have like an overconfident uh, uh junior fencer at, in the 64 um at the at the senior world cup it's like hello ah oh, yeah you were good at the junior yes world exactly cup. nice to meet you yeah yeah <laughs> that's that's exactly what i i wanted to say don't forget cadet and and junior is like no one cares i i i got tw 2011 junior world champion uh, and and one month later i went to i i can't remember actually which world cup it was i think i lost uh almost every bout in the pool no one cared about me so um you should not forget even if you are world champion in in cadet or 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 uh, but Josh, come on don't smash anybody you can still make it <laughs> you can possible. still make it but but what i actually wanted to say for example dumitrescu was not very successful in junior and and cadet and he became a very very good fencer so yeah. um what what of course, junior world champion is 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 a uh, is a great achievement, but still, yeah, you can't you can't uh, uh, qualify for Olympics with that. Um, so it's I think people should calm down and 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 just uh, just just work and and um, and yeah, be patient. Yeah. 
And it, it's, it's funny that you mentioned uh, the transition from juniors. I actually, I've been going through a lot of my, like, my hard drive and finding a bunch of old things that I have, but for some reason never posted. And I'm uploading a bunch of footage today from the Dallas 2009 World Cup that I just, like, found on my hard drive. And I have about a Max, I have about a Bjorn, um, but, like, and I, I also found a bunch of junior stuff from that. I think I... I have like about of you and Ilias, and I have one of of Matias making like the final of one of these things, so um, that'll be a trip down memory lane for you guys. Well, it'll be fun for me to watch because uh, I I don't I don't have a lot of uh, videos of me of my junior time, but from Nobody junior does. world championships, yeah, I still have it, and it looks so different. Yeah, I mean, it do I kind of it kind of looks the same, but still very different. Yeah, yeah, it, it's more like. Everything, everything, yeah, the technique looks similar, but everything is more like intentional and everything matters more. So, yeah. And, and Max is 15 kilogram lighter. <laughs> 10. <laughs> <sighs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. It's always a pleasure talking to you guys. And uh, one of the things that I miss most about not being on the World Cup circuit is is just seeing my friends. So this is a good way to to do that so thank you same here it was fun you're, thank you you're welcome yeah it was fun yeah maybe we'll do something else again at some point during the quarantine i have i have enough time <laughs> as max as max we are in the home office so we have so these guys have a podcast if you speak german i definitely recommend checking it out and i'll put it in a link in the video description as well as uh the place where you can follow them on instagram so we we have a uh, we have a youtube channel and a YouTube Since channel. Two weeks and yes, and and we are. I wouldn't say we are teaching fencing. We actually we we try to to make people move in their homes. It's in German, but maybe you can find uh, subtitles. <laughs> but <laughs> or just uh, watch and follow along. Otherwise, yes. Okay, fantastic guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.